PG. That probably only PG. <laughs> See, when when you watch it on the video, only you will know. What happened before? Ah, <laughs> insider. Yeah. So you should have been here in the room with us to have some fun. There we go. All that fun was missed. But anyway, let's get to the point. Are we in the right room? Okay. Are you in the right room as well? Good. That's okay. Good. Great. We are going to talk about the ideal environment for crafting PowerShell scripts. And this is all about dev containers and code spaces and the magic. Slow the fudge. Down. Lucky you said that. There not we the go. Non PG version. We're going to talk about dev containers, code spaces, all that fun. I know I get excited and then I speak quickly. My, uh, it's not really. I almost threw that as he turned away then. This is me. Can we put that somewhere else? Great. <laughs> it doesn't work anyway. So this is me. My name is Jess Pomfret. My pronouns are she and her. Uh, and I'm a data platform engineer for data masterminds. Uh, I'm also an open source contributor, and I've contributed code to DBA tools. Any DBA tools fans? Woo! Great. Uh, DBA checks and a couple of resources for SQL Server DSC uh, back in the day. And, and, and more and, and more, a few, and a more, few more, more and more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're Not amazing. important. Uh, oh. Is it me? Did I do that now? <laughs> sure. Sure. Huh? I was going to say about my MVP things that the call, and, but, but most important, my contact information. If you have questions or you want to chat about any of this stuff, you can find me on the internet. Great. Carry on. You don't just shout, oi, Jess. Is that just you me? can too. Oh, okay. You can. Click. Click. You will have to do that. Yeah. So I'm Rob. Uh, you might have seen me around here before. Oh, there's more people coming in. Hello. Um, uh, I work with a customer doing stuff and making it automate. I am lucky enough to be an MVP twice, once for PowerShell things and once for data things because I organize stuff like this conference, like SQL Bits, Data Saturdays and things, DBA tools, DBA checks, blah, 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 boring. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, then this is where I am. Ask me questions. I love explaining what happens. Everything I do is to help you to do stuff better. Uh, and we both like proper football. We do. And to clear up any misunderstanding, mm. okay, we are not a couple because we each have our own wives. <laughs> but we do hang out sometimes. We hang out quite a lot. Let's and listen. recently we hung out for a really long time because we decided to ride 100 miles on our bikes. 162 kilometers. Yeah, it's quite a long way. Uh, and we were raising money for charity on this. We completed this about two weeks ago now. Yes. Our legs are fine again. Yeah. So if you have any spare change, you can throw it at this QR code. Uh, we, we will happily do it. It's for, it's for a fitness charity bringing uh, movement to people who don't normally get it. So... Old people, children in hospital, disadvantaged children who can't get there. It's bringing them the chance to keep themselves fit and exercise. So it's super, super good. It is. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. We but must... why are we here today? Today we're here because VS Code is your best workspace. Okay. We are here because we want to help you to make sure that you can work with your editor and not against it not have it fight against you to make life as easy as possible i was scared then <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at notes yeah, yeah. just a bit that okay. says yes go on then no <laughs> just joking that's cool talk talk yeah so vs code gives us so many opportunities right for extensions where we might need to add in functionality for things and settings where we could maybe trim white space uh, automatically, we can configure whether, whether we want tabs or spaces. A bit, a bit uh, confrontational that, and also like auto save options, right? Do I want to save all the time or on a delay or something like that? Uh, but yeah, as Rob said, VS Code is like the best editor that we can use for our tools. But we need it to work with us and for us, not against us, right? So, does your workspace look like this? No. In this example here, we've got quite a few extensions installed. Rob, you don't know anyone whose VS Code looks like this, do no, you? No, no, no. I just no. zoom it. 74 extensions. How could you possibly need 74 extensions? Um, well, you see, the thing is, you find something cool and you 
you, you click again and and you you install it and then then you need another extension and then then you need another extension then you need another extension and i'm certain that they don't interact with each other and make anything go wrong and definitely no, none positive. are deprecated at this point none of them are deprecated you still use all of them absolutely yeah but this is the problem right we work on many different things like we already said we work on DBA tools. We do other PowerShell things. Maybe we have some PowerShell universal stuff that we're doing. Each one of those has extensions that make it easier. And so we install them on our machines. And then you end up with 74, right? But that's not the only problem. No. No. But More problems? More problems. Like this? Yeah, yeah. My seven laptops? Well, yeah, because... Every time you work on a different project, when you're on DBA tools, you've got one. When you've got DBA checks, you've got another setup. When you're with client number one, you've got a third one. When you're doing the Terraform one, you've got a fourth one. Like, we end up in this scenario where we need to be working on all of those things. And like, <laughs> like working on seven laptops is hard, isn't it, Jeff? It is. Mm, yeah. I hear that. <laughs> this doesn't look like my hair, though. No, it's true. But it's close. It's, it, it's close. But I mean, each one of these laptops is perfectly configured for one thing, right? Like in, in this one with DBA tools, the standards for code mean that I need to use spaces. I need to have help uh, for every command, right? There's certain things I need to check. My markdown needs to be written in a certain way. But then on this laptop, my markdown is written in a slightly different way. And this is where we start getting into problems, right? And that's why I need seven laptops. Uh, yeah. Is there a, is there the, the, a solution? The, well, uh, unfortunately, there's, there's also like the other problem. Eesh. Yeah. This looks more like me. Like, <laughs> like, honestly, our wife said, why are you using a picture of your own desks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where did it? We're like, no, it's just AI. Honest. Uh, but in all seriousness, we know even people who install 74 extensions in their thing. Uh, we know... I only had 73, so we couldn't use mine. <laughs> that working in a messy workspace is more difficult for our brains. It's easier if we have everything listed out. And we've used examples here where we're looking at the physical infrastructure of where you are working. But we want you to bring that into the actual configuration of your workspace the specific workspace within your Visual Studio code that you use to do your editing and your developing and your releasing for your PowerShell development or other development. Do you have any more problems? Has anyone heard this? <laughs> yeah. How often does something work perfectly on your machine because I have the exact extension I need and the settings exactly how I need, and then I give it to Rob, and I'm like, Rob, look how cool this is, and he just gets a lot uh, of red. Yeah, many, many reds. Yeah. I get many reds. Um, and it's not just that. What about when Claudio did his first uh, pull request into our DBA checks things? Mm. And he had changed every single file. He didn't know that. He didn't mean to. But his VS Code setting had trimmed the white space off the end of every line in every file, including the markdown, which broke a load of stuff, right? Whereas ours, we'd set up not to do that. So our source control system is going, well, I'll help you out. I'll show you the difference between this file and this file. It's 1,373 spaces. Yikes. Oh. Right? So it's not just about does our code compile? Does our dev work? It's about the settings for our environment. Are they the same? We're talking about spellings, doing markdown, mm. doing documentation. We use a spell check extension to make sure that when we are writing something that's for the US audience, so we have to be US English. Other times, maybe we're using GP English. Often, we're working on projects with unique names that we need to add into the exceptions. Turns but, out DBA tools isn't in the dictionary. It's funny that. But we don't want to put the, the name of our favorite client into our global exception list. We want that to be specific for that workspace. So that's how we will build this up. So let's make things simpler. And with that, with dev containers, we can help to simplify this workflow, but also help to solve all these problems that we've identified, right? So... The first thing we're going to need to know is what this is, right? Everybody know what a dev container is? 
I'm glad that you know. Is this, yeah. This guy is giving another dev container session right after this one. So stick around for some practical dev container examples. Well, a dev container is just a, this lightweight, portable, reproducible development environment, right? All the things we've talked about, the extensions, the settings, like all of the code that we need can be c containerized within this dev container. And so when I open it, I have everything I need. Rob pulls it down from the repo, opens it. He has everything he needs to. But how does that actually look like logically, physically? Let's, let, let's look at this nice diagram. So this is pulled straight from the Microsoft Docs. Uh, and if you pull down our presentation, which is in the PSConf repo, uh, the links is in the notes here. Uh, but basically, we have our local environment over on the left. Thank you, Rob. And then we mount our source, co source code into the container on the VS Code side. And VS Code basically takes that source code and the special files that define a dev container and create this in containerized environment. Ex exhibit A. And within there, we have the file system that we need, all of our source code. We have all of the extensions we need. We've got all this stuff that we need to develop within the container. All of our settings, everything. And then when we switch to something else, this container can still be sat running. Yeah. And then you get project number three, up comes your thing. It then has all of these things. You see this exposed port, we've got our VS Code server. So that is the magic bit of software that gets installed inside this container to enable it to talk backwards and forwards with your operating system. And we need three things for us to be able to use dev containers on our laptop, okay? Fingers. We need Docker Desktop, oh, Docker or Desktop. an alternative Docker option, something like Podman, or other, other options are available. We need VS Code or VS Code Insiders, right? The actual product that we're going to use. And then we need the dev containers extension for VS Code. With those three things, uh, we'll be able to create dev containers. How will we do that, Rob? Just like that. That uh, easy. That easy. One way that you can create a dev container is just to do Control Shift P or F1, Command Shift P to open up the command palette in VS Code and type in dev container and it'll say add container configuration and away you can go. Follow your nose. You can install all of the things. We won't even demo this because you can just go and have a play and click, see all of the options. There are many, many options. Like you, PowerShell. Like PowerShell. Yeah, you can have PowerShell. The other way that you can do it is if you have the extension installed, you can start with a file you call devcontainer.json. You can press control space and you'll have all of your IntelliSense is going to show you what options you have. You can start typing and searching. Okay. We're going to show you there are some places where there's a lot of options. Yes. Jess already talked about Docker and Putman. So you can cycle along that path. You can use a virtualization software. I will tell you that if you use Docker, it's probably going to work. And if you use Podman, it's probably going to work after you have spent many hours fighting with strange error messages <laughs> and stuff that didn't quite work as expected. Your and note's actually saying if you, have used Pod, if you use Podman, you may have fun. You may have fun. Okay. Shall I answer this call from a recruiter? Uh, probably not okay. right now. All That's right. recorded. All right. Your employer will know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's me. Uh, so <laughs> Do you want to talk about this, Podman? Um, Just some settings that if you're going to use Podman uh, that you need to change. If you're going to use Docker, you can skip this slide, right? The challenge is if you're going to use Podman, you want to be using it inside WSL. Here are two, three settings technically that you can change that you'll find in VS Code to do with WSL and where your Podman machine is, what type of uh, containerization you're using, and shall we forward our WSL services? So those are useful. They'll get you some of the way. The rest of it will be fun and games. All right, let's talk about features. So with dev containers, when we're setting up our dev container JSON file, which we'll see in the demo in a second, you can install features and basic or, or just configure features, I guess. Within the JSON, you can see here we've got features defined and we're pulling in some common utils and we're pulling in PowerShell. 
And with those features, there are some options that are documented. Uh, for example, the PowerShell features include modules. So which modules do you want to be in your uh, container every time you load it? Uh, and you can... And you can do a PowerShell profile URL. So if I have my profile, in this case, it's in uh, Rob's. He's got a gist or a gist. Gist or gist. I say gist. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, the GitHub snippets, uh, you can just put that URL in here. And every time we open the dev container, it will say, all right, we need these modules installed and we need to load this profile. This That's is pretty neat. amazing. I got you. I'll be in a minute. This means that you can have all of the things that you have in your profile, all of those little helpful functions and things, all of the pretty prompt stuff you have to make your coworkers laugh. You'll see this later on. You have all of this available. But this should say public PowerShell profile mm. URL. Hey. Okay. I would not put anything in here that you don't want Irvin to see. Okay? I mean, he's lovely. He wouldn't do anything with it. But if you don't want him to see it, don't put it in this profile URL. Super useful. You had a question, my friend. Hmm. Ah, so the question is, how do you authenticate that? You go to that URL and anybody could have it. It's amazing. Uh, hang on. But... That's the point. You're well, welcome. The, the other thing with dev containers, and you'll see this in the demo, is there's multiple ways of doing everything. So this way, we're loading the profile from an open public URL, but we could also have it within our dev container configuration within our private repo, right? So then only people with access to the repo will be able to pull down the dev container and the profile could be in there also. Neat. Okay. It's demo time. It's demo time. All right. Yes. Let's go to this one first. Yes. How, is that big enough for the back? Bigger. bigger. Cool. Better? Awesome. All right. So this is a folder of code that I have open in VS Code. Uh, you can see over here, I've got a .dev container folder. And that is what makes uh, this folder the ability to become a dev container. Down here in the bottom left, assistant. Thank you. You can see that I'm in a dev container, uh, and it's called PowerShell. I've got my terminal here. All this is running within the container, right? You're doing a great job. And the way we configure this is we've got a... Let me go into this one. So actually, in this repo, we've also got two dev containers defined. Uh, but the way that we define a dev container is this JSON file. And we're going to look Why at this Why would we have file. two dev containers can defined you've just been talking about why we can have one project and one way of working you know why because yeah, i know my why. my co-worker thought it would be a good idea to get a new computer two days ago isn't it true with a completely different architecture yep and nothing worked correct cool, cool. But they say don't update don't do windows updates and don't update vs code right before you present this guy's like it's, ba it's barbara's fault okay so i got the new lab exactly. no 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 serious I got the new laptop and I said to Barbara, shall I do, should we do the keynote on this new laptop? Or, and she, Barbara says, yeah, it's just got PowerPoint in the keynote. We'll be fine. I went, okay, yeah, do all that. And then went, oh, wait. <laughs> what about my session with what Jess? About this? No worries. It's but all right. It's all fixable because Code Spaces allows you to do that. Now, there's a specific reason why we've got it like this here. We also have two dev containers in our DBA checks um, repository for developing because one of them is used by our build process to be able to do a load of stuff with the same docker file so that we know that everything's working in the code space and one is used by us on our machines at home to make sure that it all works cool all right so let's look at the format of this json file real quick so you can see there's a name there's an image this is the stuff that's going to get pre-populated when you do get into your command palette and you choose get, make me a new dev container it's going to add these things automatically for you. And then we can start to configure it, right? So it's based on PowerShell. It's based on this particular image uh, that will get pulled down and used. But we can configure it for the things we care about. So first of all, our features. These were the ones you saw in the, in the PowerPoint. Here's the PowerShell one. These are the modules we want to install. Here's the link to the profile, right? We can also add post-create commands. Yes. 
if you have a specific need for a version for those modules mm. that's not currently configurable in there. Oh, so good to know. We've got a post create command that will run when this container is created every time. So if there is a certain setup you need to happen, you could add that in here. Run a script. Can you zoom that to the zoom zoom to the right? Zoom to the right. Because what you can see also is you can do stuff like install oh my posh to make mm -hmm. the prompt beautiful. Yep. Yep. And then we've got our customizations, which is one of the things I really love about dev containers, because I like to know that when I pass my code over to Rob, he's going to have the settings I like so that when he PRs back to my repo, it's got the things exactly how I like it, right? So here you can see we've got some settings. You can add loads more into here. Any let's, VS... Let's do that. Let's add a setting. Let, let's, let's do a control space on the end of that and, and have a look. Uh, you've, uh, yep. So pick a... Start, start typing. Right, so now you can start seeing, if you start typing PowerShell, they're trim trailing white spaces in regex and strings. True well, or false. false? What about another one? We have PowerShell, we could be code folding, enable code formatting, keep rolling down. Do we have a, do we have a white space after the brace or before the brace? Is it on the same line? If you're in a professional environment, wah, then what you can do is make sure that you have a conversation with your team and then you say this is how it will be and you put it down there when a new member joins and they want to have it done differently vs code's automatically going to flip it back it will annoy them but it means that your code is kept to the guidelines which is much better than saying I'm not accepting this PR because you need to go back to read the coding guidelines to understand how we do braces or how we do whatever Neat. And actually, I closed it. I should have left it up. But because I changed this configuration file on the fly, it popped up and said, hey, you've changed the configuration file for the dev container. Should I reload? Right. So I could save that, reload, and it would reopen with these new settings. Neat. Cool. Then I've got some extensions. We haven't got very many in this one because it's just a... Uh, you can add 74. You could add 74, but the point is you don't need to add um, 74 because we only need the ones that are applicable to this repo, right? Cam yourself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, right? Is it a good idea? I don't know, but you can do it. So this is a pretty simple dev container. And just to prove that we've got some stuff in here working, we can load profile, which is coming from the profile on our yeah. gist. On our gist. 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 Okay, and we got some nice prompt, and now we can say get event results, event This name. is an amazing function. <laughs> it's really not. What it's doing is it's going to the, uh, if you tab, yep. there we go. We're getting from the website which uh, events have got the results already, and then we can just do an FT. Oh, okay. But oh. I, that was your name. Okay. I want my name. There we go. So you can do where, that's not your name. Well, it is. That's your dad. It's my daddy. -o. There we go. Jess and her dad. Did, did. So these are the results pulling from the bike ride we did, right? Yeah. And so Rob has written a function that goes out, scrapes the website because the results were horrendous. The format was just like a list of people that rode their bikes with the times. And we were like, but I want to sort it. I want to filter it's, it. It's ordered by race number. Yeah. Brilliant when you have long, medium, and short routes, and uh, first names and surnames. So like all the useful things you could, all, you could filter by, nope. Race number, yeah, we will do it by that. <laughs> awesome. All right, shall I show the other dev container, the more complicated one? Just or have a quick, to... quick flick into it, yeah. Okay. We, 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 we'll, no, no, uh, yeah, go, go with that one. So this is uh, the PSHTML demos that I did yesterday. I did a session on writing beautiful reports with PSHTML, a PowerShell module that basically renders HTML from PowerShell code, right? And for that, I did everything in the container. And so I knew that I would have everything I needed for the demos. And this one's a little more complicated because instead of just building off of a existing image, I created my own image with all the things I needed and hosted it on Docker Hub. For this dev container, JSON, instead of having just a plain image here, I decided to use a Docker Compose file. So you can specify more things as you open your dev container, right? I'm going to skip the rest of this dev container, JSON, because we went through that in the other one. Except for? Except for? The service, okay. because that's where you come in. You've got multiple containers. You need to know what your service is from your Docker yep. Compose file. 
Good point. Yeah, so this one only actually has one container, but in some of the training days we've done, we've had, I think, three in here. Yeah, DBHX. Three different SQL Server instances within one dev container environment, which is super neat. So go pull that. You can go pull the DBHX one. Mm -hmm. You will see exactly how that works. And yep. we actually then build a new image. It then goes to a GitHub workflow. It updates the version. It then updates the Docker Compose in this one so that the next time you pull it, you're getting all of this updated stuff in those three containers that we're using. Yeah. So it's super neat. It's really configurable. And like we said, there's many ways to do it. So this, this image has everything I need in it. But I could have had a Docker Compose file with a folder and built that right on the fly. But every time I ran my dev container, then it would pull down the image, it would install the thing, it would do this. It takes longer, right? So pre-packaging it, trying to make it as efficient as, as possible. Neat. Neat. Back to the slides. Back to the slides. What's a dev container? What? No, what's a code space? So we've got dev containers, right? And it's running in VS Code on our local machines, which is super neat. But this is even neater because you can take that dev container. We obviously are already hopefully putting all our stuff in source control. And if we have it on GitHub, we can use code spaces to open the dev container in a browser. Oh, my. How cool is that? Like the rest of that statement, everything else is all pretty much exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Still running in containers. The way it's set up is exactly the same. It's using the same file. It's going to set everything up the same exactly as you want it. So it's absolutely brilliant and amazing for you to be able to work on anything that you want, except if you're on an airplane. True. Yeah. Well, actually, some of these long distance airplanes have got Wi Fi, which is good enough to do browsers. Yeah, you don't want to be pulling an image down. So mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to have. They're running locally where you're going to be pulling an image down. But if all of that's happening up in the cloud, then actually maybe you can't even do it on an airplane with Wi-Fi. It's cool. Click. Click, I reckon. That's the thing that I just talked about. Yeah, so yeah. I'll click again? Yeah, go on. Then we're going to do Point demos. Up. Oh, demos. Oh. So you know when you said to your boss that you were going to get a new laptop? This is my old laptop. Ah. Uh, Okay, don't worry, because with code spaces, the magic is in the cloud, so we don't even need this, right? Nobody worry. I'll just unplug this. I know. What, what's this? Rob, what's... we can't use an iPad. Yeah, we can use an iPad. How much of this do you want? Uh, um, I would like... I'm going to put this more gently over here, but... Go for it. Then the clicker, which was just... I'm going to plug this in. Yep. We didn't test it with your dongle. AV friend? Oh, look at that. There we oh, go. press the three dots, remember? Press the three dots. Hey, move to display. Boom. That looks like our uh, dev container. PS Con for you, dev container. So it's like, really? I'm going to get this. Yeah, typey, why is it not in its... Typey dick. So that I could prove that it was actually a... Oh, uh, I see. ...thingy. But what People... I should have done is put it back in again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot so to do that. So we could use the keyboard. Yeah, I forgot to do that bit. Um, I can't see where I am. Am I there? Yeah, you're in the... Uh, Am I typing? No, you're not typing. Oh, dear. Maybe click into that. Actually, neither of us can use an iPad, so that's where this is quite fun. <laughs> Crowd participation. Do we have any Apple fans? So, uh, am I actually... Yeah, 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 but you've got Dash event. I haven't got a get. There's no get there. Yep, uh, get event. Okay, now you can tab complete because you've got... I actually, literally can't. So all I can see is press, reflection. Press R. And now is it space to get the... Uh, was that tab or space? That was a tab. Okay, but a space would have done... Press space again. Yep. Now do space to do the prediction. Mm, no. Anyway, you can see. I, yes. I mean, I can't see what I'm typing, but we are literally in the same... We've got, we've got the options for event name. So yeah. if you do that... Yeah, I can't, I can't do anything. But, but still, pretty cool, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. The other nice thing about that, right, is you can just create those code spaces define them how you want they've got it's got all the modules it's got all the things in it and then we can teach people like if we had a long session about this you could all go on to github create code spaces and use our our repo in the cloud there are some i can't remember what the free tier gets you but that you do get some minutes, okay. i believe let's take it a step further so now we've got our dev container setup and configuration that we've built that we're running in a code space in GitHub. 
Yep. So we were just able to connect to it on an iPad. We could anything with a browser is going to work. I have done this on a mobile phone only to prove that I could <laughs> <laughs> because that's the sort of person I am. I, I do that sort of stuff. When, when friends ask me partial questions and I've got no device around me, I open up Cloud Shell on my phone so that I can run some PowerShell and test how stuff works. So now we're in, this is Visual Studio Code. Okay. Uh, but down at the bottom here. Well, hold on a minute. It says Code Spaces. So now I've attached my Visual Studio Code to the code space that's running in the cloud. So I don't need, you know, we said you must have a Docker or a Podman or a whatever. I don't need that. I can have it in a code space and I can run it as in VS Code completely naturally, just like I would anyway. And the only difference is, is that I'm connected to that code space. Which is super cool. So I can do a load profile. Going to find me a thing. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, it's a nice one. So the reason you do this is so that you can make your yeah, co co-workers laugh. <laughs> This was for one of our training days. Rob put together this load profile and then he just committed it to the repo. So the next time I was working on it, I was like, what is this? And then I got this cat. I was like, what kind of prompt is this? But also, the other reason for doing this is if you've got a profile that loads and takes some time and does a load of stuff, sometimes you want to just open up PowerShell and start, start running. So what my profile does is it only runs if I actually load this stuff in. So if I just open PowerShell... It's open him almost immediately, mm. and I'm straight into generic PowerShell. If I'm working on a GitHub repository and I want to know where I am and do all of that funky stuff and load all the rest of the things that are in my profile, I run low profile and then I get all of that. So that, I find, is a really, really useful thing that, that we can do. Um, the interesting thing with this, this is a Copilot PC laptop. So it is running on ARM infrastructure. So that means that when we first did this, the container went, nope. Because you saw it was pulling down that, uh, it was the Debian LTS mm -hmm. uh, PowerShell container that was coming. There are many, many versions of PowerShell container that you can use. What should happen is when it's being pulled down, it should go, hang on a minute, you're not the right architecture, we'll have this one. But on these Windows ARM machines, it just goes, okay, you won that one, great. Right? So we're just a little bit behind. It will get better. That brings some additional challenges. So if we look at our uh, dev container here, what we're doing is we are running not... We are not running from an image. We are running from a Docker file. The rest of it looks pretty much the same, except that you cannot run the features. The features will not install on this container on a Windows machine because they need various packages and it, I can't get them to install. And when I say I can't, it's because my Docker file now it looks like this. Not really doing anything very complicated. So the Docker file is a list of commands that we want to run to create our container for us to be able to work in. This, if we just put image, it will just run this image. We then need to install tar, we need to install arc, we need to install unzip. Um, there's some other stuff that probably I could end up making it work. And we're using this 7.4 Mariner with the ARM64 in infrastructure. Okay, so that's really important if you're going to be outside of the normal one. Sometimes it might be worth to specifically pull out which architecture that you're going to use. And hang on a minute, I've got no features. So I've got no PowerShell, so I haven't installed my modules. And um, I don't have my profile. So... How can I do that when you just showed me that we'd already got the profile? If we look in our dev container, Jason, what we've got from our post create command is run this file in bash. I'm laughing at your four hours ago because Git because stole, my, Git stole JSON. my JSON. Yeah. 
because Git stole my JSON. <laughs> we like to make fun commit, commit messages. Um, we're going to run this install file, post create. So there's three different create file, uh, create commands that you can run when you create a dev container. This one runs after the container has been created inside the container, ready for when you're going to start. So now we can go, great. So that, there's the curl, um, oh my posh um, installation. There's Rob just going, I need a directory and a file. There's better ways of doing it, I know, but I just needed to get it done this morning. Now I can create my PowerShell profile file. Now I can use the curl to grab the public profile. This could be the place where you could in, uh, interject some authentication method that you pull from a GitHub workflow to blah, 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 if you, if you needed to. And then I just do a push, 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 push. It's probably Dutch. Push. Uh, that's the <laughs> install. It's okay, Barbara's not in here. I've got away with it. Install module. We'll get all of our modules, put it in a scope all users. Bingo, I'm away. So there are always different ways to do it. Hopefully, most of the time, you're going to be able to just use that nice, simple way of um, organizing your files and your creating your infrastructure to get things done. Sneak. Sneak. Did we have more slides? Cause, uh, no. Because we're, we're on your machine. It's broken. It's broken. But okay. the, the, the only other slide is the question one. Okay. So, so uh, anyone, do, you, do you have any questions, Jeff? I've got one question. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Great so question. The, the question was, would this version of setting things up enable you to get the uh, particular version of your PowerShell module? Absolutely. You've got complete control here. I've chosen Bash, but you know, you can, you can do anything you want. It's scriptable. We love it. It's automation. Is that a question, my friend? Or just a like, oh, I'm tired. Um, I have to ask. So I work here in a project using uh, DevOps and stuff. Am I out of luck? Okay, so the question is, I'm using DevOps Git instead of, uh, so Azure DevOps as my source control repository instead of GitHub as my source control repository. And I was asked the same question to, earlier whilst I was doing this file, in fact, whilst I was doing this, is, oh, can I, 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 all of our stuff is on GitLab. And I, they're like, can we use this? I'm like, okay, let's think about this. GitLab and Azure DevOps source control are just the source control for our code. Okay. We have some code. We need to put it in source control. Can you do that? Yes. All of the dev container capability is built into the VS code as long as you have the extension. Does that need GitLab or Azure DevOps repos? No, it doesn't. Uh-oh. We've got your mouse. Uh, I haven't got my mouse. It's a me. There we go. Um, so we, we don't need it for that. So that's all built into your machine. So you can run the dev container with any source control you like. You could use local Git. Like you think about it, we could just initialize a Git repository straight on onto the file system, and then we can make use of dev containers locally. To be fair, you probably don't even need it to be a Git repository. Nope. It can just be a folder with dev container configuration in. But VS, VS Code just needs to know that it's in this folder, mm-hmm. dot dev container. And I think it needs to be that file name, or does it matter? Yeah, it does. Do you know? It does, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. We think it needs to be that, that file name. Yeah. Can you do the code space stuff? No, that's what you pay GitHub for. So GitLab and uh, Azure DevOps definitely don't have it at the moment. Excellent question. Good question. Thank you. Yes, my friend. Make it a little bit more difficult, Tifa. Um, what if, so to say, you are not an admin on your computer, you can install VS Code because that's a perfect profile, but you cannot properly install Git because it needs to write to a cloud, etc. Can you then also use the Finish Platform? So the question is, I'm not an admin on my machine. I, I am able to install Visual Studio Code because that's sitting in my user profile. I'm not able to install Git. We don't necessarily need Git. Um, but perhaps you're thinking about, do I need, what about the containerization layer? Can I do this without the con- con- containerization layer? Okay, so you're in the opposite situation to my mm-hmm. friend over here, right? Because what you can do, if you're allowed to use GitHub, 
is you can do all of your coding. You could connect your VS Code to your remote code space, like I am here. Right. Yeah. So it's not looking good. It's not looking good. You you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You you either need to have the ability to have a containerization layer, Docker, Podman, Systemd, those sort of things, or to be able to use GitHub to be able to use either dev containers or code spaces, unfortunately. Maybe GitLab, maybe Azure DevOps will catch on. Irvin doesn't think that Azure DevOps will do that. I personally wouldn't like to comment, Mr. Microsoft. Thank you very much. I like my MVP. <clears throat> what if you had a uh, containerized, maybe he has Kubernetes or something running. Could you have your container? Oh, no. Could you have your container somewhere else and connect to that as if it was? So the question is, could... I have we... a mic. You don't have to repeat it. No, but it's the advantage. So here's a little speaker trick. One of the reasons that we say you repeat the question is so that it gets onto the recording. Second reason for saying repeat the question is it gives me time to think about what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, that's going to be dark for now. The question is, the we, question, yeah, but now we can put whatever we want on there in the recording. <sighs> it's true. Green screen. The question is, if I am running my containers somewhere remotely, can I run dev containers? And the answer is going to be no, because you remember the setting that I showed you for Podman, where I said, where is my containerization layer located? And what is the name of my um, uh, Podman? Um, what's the name? Repository? No, that's the wrong one. Podman machine. You have to put those settings into um, into Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. So this 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 machine needs to know where its virtualization layer is, and you yeah. can't you can't add an external API Kubernetes thing for that. Mm. So I think the answer is no. Then it's still not looking good. Sorry, I tried. <laughs> End of the session. <laughs> we're out of time so the, the question the question was oh my goodness Kubernetes and some stuff which I didn't understand <laughs> can, can you remove the SSH into the uh, machine oh yeah so the, so the follow up is uh, can you not remote SSH into the machine where you are running your container layer so that you can use your it's a long dev question. container back Don't remember in. it being this long. And then... Ooh. Here's me. Hello. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so because I think if we come into uh, there and we look for dev... That was a silly thing to look for, Rob. We look for dev containers. Uh, 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 maybe you could try that if you can make your if that if you could make the path that you put in here. For, oh no, that's not going to work because that's the distro. So no, that won't work. That's what I was thinking, but. Uh, Mm, I think not, because this machine is still not going to know where that virtualization is to, to run the build X um, when it needs to build up the container. But I like the way you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please go away and try it. Make it work. Let us know. Any I more questions? There's, there's, there's two 44. more questions. We're at 44 minutes. So we will take these two questions and then we will go outside and, and we will run away from you. No, we will be available. That's right. We'll be available for questions. Correct. Okay. Th this is not like uh, sharing session state when you open the page. Like so this is not like, is, is this like live share of code? No, this is not like live share of code. It's just, uh, it's just a state file. However... My glamorous assistant can hold that, and you can see there. We should it do it. The, we should do it the other way around. You should do it on this one, so it shows up there. No, I can't. No, what? <laughs> it's just so small. I know, but if you look there, Irvin will confirm that. 
You're the glamorous assistant. So this, I've created a file. Hi, hi. That was a, that was a, oh, for yeah. those that couldn't hear it. I should have been closer. Yeah. That's how quick we can create the file here. Good, right. And it appears on there. But so it's not, we're connected to the same session. These are both connected are to both the same connected container, to the same right? Session. Because it's a code space. Not the same PowerShell session, because what I've typed in here is not available to be seen on there, mm -hmm. but the same container is running these two PowerShell sessions. So one more question here at the front. And these containers run Windows OS and PowerShell files. And time's up. <laughs> <laughs> you had to ruin it, didn't you? The, the question was, I'm sorry. The question was, can these, containers, can these containers run Windows containers or are we only limited to Linux? So the question, first question is, why the, do you wish to run Windows containers? What a waste of time. But assuming you have a good reason for, for, for doing that, these are containers. Your dev container is not going to run on any other machine. It's not, it won't run on my machine if it's a Windows container. It's only going to run on a Windows machine with Docker flipped to allow Windows containers. It's not going to run in GitHub code spaces. But for that specific environment, I believe that it will, but I have not tried it. That's your homework now. Okay. So we are at time and uh, we need to be respectful of the next person that's coming in. So thank you very much. Good job.